Hey everyone, welcome back to the first video of 2020. Uh, it's a new decade, and with the new decade, I want to talk about the most 2010s topic of all time, the macOS menu bar. So let's just jump right into it. Envialt is a notes app that will talk to SimpleNote or will edit files that are in any directory on your system. Uh, what makes this app stand out is the fact that it does everything via the keyboard. Uh, you open the app, close the app, edit, create, delete, rename, reorganize, and do everything else you'd want to do to a note via a key binding. Basically like Vim for notes, which sounds kind of odd, but it's super, super helpful. So let's imagine that I want to create a new note. I would open Envialt via a keyboard shortcut. Uh, mine is Alt space. And then I can begin typing any text into the bar up here. The uh, search bar is automatically selected. And if I type in any text that's in a previously existing note, we will automatically be able to find it. If not, we can simply hit enter to create a new note with this title. And from here on out, Envialt works with Markdown, so it's super, super easy to create very well organized notes. Uh, Envialt also automatically creates a notes document for you with all of the keyboard shortcuts that you could need to know to use the app. They're very simple key binding, so it should take you no time at all to learn. It's far and away the best notes app that I've used on uh, Mac OS. Um, now one thing to keep in mind is that there is a replacement for this app coming pretty soon uh, called Envy Ultra. It's being developed by one of the original developers um, and uh, it's been in beta for a while. I don't know when it's coming out exactly. I don't think anyone does, but uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Our second app is an app that solves a really annoying problem on Mac OS uh, and to be fair, basically every operating system. And that problem is apps that just sort of want to stay open in the background for forever. Now I remember, and I'm sure a lot of people remember the days when closing a window meant that you actually closed an app, but then Skype came along and ruined everything. Uh, and to be completely fair to developers, it does seem to be mostly first party Mac OS apps that have this problem, uh, but there actually are plenty of third party apps that behave just as bad. So what Quitter does is it's open in the background, which is ironic, I know, and just monitors for inactivity in any app that you add to its list. Um, so it's very easy to add an app to Quitter. You just hit this plus icon and you're automatically taken to the applications folder on your system where you can select any app that likes to stay open in the background for ridiculous amounts of time. Uh, by default, Quitter will close after 10 minutes of inactivity. That timing has worked really well for me as long as I've been using the app, uh, so that's what I'll recommend as well. But uh, this is one of a couple of apps on this list that when it's behaving correctly, you will never have to see or touch or think about ever again. It'll just live in the menu bar and do its thing. Another thing that we lack on macOS is a window manager, and I'm not actually one that thinks that this type of thing is totally necessary. It's pretty rare that I split a window to the left or the right side of the screen or to the top or the bottom or whatever. Uh, you know, I find hiding a window and the command tab menu to be much more helpful for this type of thing. Uh, but the great thing about Rectangle is that it enables much, much more than your typical window manager. Uh, Rectangle is a newer app that's actually based on a pretty old one called Spectacle. Um, this is a window manager that originally caught my attention because it allows you to really quickly like full screen an app or you could uh, center it in the middle of the screen or there are keyboard shortcuts built in for or moving apps between multiple monitors, which is shockingly handy. Uh, there's also a built-in undo and redo. You can see I can very quickly full screen a window, but if I decide, hey, I don't like that, there's a shortcut built in to just undo that, go back to the way the window was before, and that's something that's overlooked in far too many of these window manager type applications. One other thing that I'm a big fan of is the ability to very quickly and easily resize windows with a bit more fine grain control, which again, isn't necessarily something Thing that's built into a lot of window managers. I, I could definitely snap a window to a side of the screen, but if, you know, that doesn't really work out for me, it's pretty easy to just expand it a bit more. Now, of course, Rectangle inherits all of these features and by default uses the same key bindings, but what I really loved about Spectacle and what I really love about Rectangle now is that both apps function basically entirely via key bindings. Um, now, Rectangle by default actually will allow you to snap windows by dragging them into corners, which is, you know, fairly typical 
typical behavior from a window manager. This is what a lot of macOS window managers enable. This is how Windows works by default. But I kind of despise this. I, I, I really am not a fan of this way of doing window management because I always end up snapping a window where I don't want it to be. I'll drag something out of the way and end up snapping it into the corner. And it's just, I don't want an app to try to guess what I'm doing for me. And in this regard, Rectangle is the perfect window manager. Uh, you can very quickly turn off that functionality in the settings and also hide the menu bar icon apparently. Uh, and then Rectangle will sit open in the background and do absolutely nothing until you tell it to. It's like the perfect little digital slave. And of course you have the option to change all of the key bindings if you don't like them or there's some that you don't use. You can very quickly just open up the preferences and remap any of the keyboard shortcuts and clicking on the menu bar icon will show you all of your available uh, options at any time with whatever shortcuts you're using for them. So that's great. Uh, next up is Mac Media Key Forward. This is an app that allows you to remap the play, pause, and skip keys on your keyboard to always control for iTunes or Spotify or both regardless of what window is in the front. It's super simple. You'll never touch it other than the initial setup, but it will make your experience on Mac OS so much better. Uh, next up, we have an emoji uh, manager, I guess is what you would call this. Um, the one that I'm personally uh, a fan of is Rocket. Uh, the way that this app works is it borrows functionality from, I believe, uh, Slack, but don't quote me on that. Any window that you can type text in, you can immediately type a delimiter character. By default, it's just a colon, but you can change this to whatever you want. And the next characters you type will automatically be searching through the database of like all the emojis that there are. When you find an emoji you want, you hit enter and it's automatically pasted in for you. Uh, now this works in web browsers, it works in text editors, it works everywhere that you can type text. But of course, if there are some apps where you don't want it to work, it's very easy to make that happen. Next up, we have the app with the weirdest name on this list, Keeping You Awake. This is a replacement for an older macOS app called Caffeinate uh, that hasn't been updated to work with newer versions of macOS, but all it does is basically trigger a command line application by the same name. This is a feature that essentially just keeps your system from going to sleep until you tell it to stop. If you're rendering a program or you're just like downloading a big file, I think you can immediately see why this would be a very, very handy utility to have. Um, the issue is that I use the program infrequently enough that if I'm going to use it on the command line, I constantly have to look through the manual to remember what options I need to add to get it to work the way that I want it to, but I also use it frequently enough that, you know, I, I don't want to have to do that. So the mini bar icon is like the perfect solution. It's there when I need it. And if I don't, I just ignore it and go on about my business and there's no more, well, there's a lot less flipping through manuals and things of that sort. Uh, next up is Mini Bar Colors. This is an app that's a bit less universally appealing, uh, but if you do any kind of work with color, whether it be uh, motion graphics or web design, UX, anything like that, this is a great app to have. Uh, Mini Bar Colors is basically just a color picker, similar to what you get in Photoshop or Affinity, that lives in your mini bar and is there when you need it. You can sample any color from anything on your monitor anything on your display and immediately get um you know uh, hexadecimal values or rgb values or you know whatever kind of color values you need to do whatever kind of work with color it is that you do uh next up we have an app called meteorologist this is one of a ton of different apps that basically just aims to add the weather forecast to your menu bar uh, the thing that i really like about this app is that it talks to a whole bunch of different weather services by default it talks to yahoo but you can see here just by clicking all the different options that we have you may have to go and get an api key from some of these websites, which isn't too big of a deal. Uh, most of them will fetch the weather like a thousand times a day or something for free. So if you want to get much more accurate weather from Dark Sky or like NOAA or just something that's slightly more local than just generic Yahoo weather, that's great. But in addition to that, you also have a lot of options over what is actually displayed in the menu bar. A lot of these kind of weather apps just throw whatever information they think you want up there, and uh, that's not so great. I tend to like a very minimalistic type of thing that just shows like just the actual temperature outside and like a little icon so I can tell if it's raining. And this is a shockingly hard point to get to with a lot of these weather menu bar type of apps, but meteorologists never had an issue with it, pulls data from wherever I want, displays whatever I want in the mini bar. It's really, really spectacular. Uh, now the penultimate program on this list is a replacement for the date and time that is by default in the mini bar. Um, now I have a really serious issue with the default 
date and time that lives in the minibar, basically just because it is wildly uncustomizable. All the options we have for customizing the date and time is to use a 24 hour clock, display the time with seconds, or to show an analog clock, which even if you're just like a huge fan of traditional watch faces or analog clocks, I mean, this is way too small of an icon to be able to read accurately in the mini bar. Anyways, this is just dumb. It's, it's not helpful. It's not useful. So there are a ton, <laughs> again, a ton of these like replacements for the default clock. But the one that I find myself liking a lot is Deo. Um, the reason for this is because it's very, very simple, like almost deceptively so. When you open up the preferences, all you get are two little checkboxes, show icon, which will show like a calendar icon with the numbered day up there in the corner, and another option to launch Deo at login, which I would recommend. And then you just have a text box, which this is the part that might be slightly less user-friendly. Deo works with uh, these date codes, which if you've used any kind of snippet app or something, you're probably pretty familiar with, but if you're super new to this type of thing, I'll give you a super basic breakdown. So let's take a look at one of the examples they have set up. Uh, we were displaying the day, as in the day of the week, and then the month, the day of the month, the numbered day, and then the year in two-digit form. Now that's very easy to do. We type EE, comma, then the just comma is being printed, then MMM for month, the full name month, full spelled out, like not abbreviated version, space D, lowercase d is just the day, printed out, and then YY is year with two digits. And again, this sounds like cryptic and weird, but there's a full, like very detailed guide down here at the bottom where you can see all, every single option you have. And if you don't want to fish through all the options, you could find one of these templates up here for a pattern. Um, now, if you're interested in what I have in my actual menu bar, this should be pretty simple. Uh, we have EEE, -E -E, which is just going to print out the day, abbreviated to three letters always, as in the day of the week. And then we have the day, as in the numbered day of the month. Uh, just one letter will mean that it will not display a zero. If I were to add a second D here, it will always display the date as two digits, which I don't always like. And then we have MMM, which will display the month, um, but abbreviate it to three characters. If we were to add a fourth M, it will always print out the full name of the month. Uh, and then I just have a space H colon MM, which is just the time to minutes. I think if we did a capital H, yeah, we'll use 24 hour time and the lowercase H's will use um, 12 hour time. And then the A here at the end, we'll just, we'll add the AM slash PM thing. So I, I think hopefully you can probably get a pretty good idea of how this works. It's again, sort of deceptively simple, but does its job really, really well. And finally, now let's talk about what is basically the holy grail of mini bar apps, and that is uh, Bartender, or so you probably think. Uh, the need for this type of application, like uh, basically a menu bar manager, if you will, comes down to yet another oversight on the part of Apple. Windows 10 and every Linux desktop environment that utilizes any kind of top bar that I've ever used includes a way to hide icons that you don't want to constantly be shown on the bar. Uh, Mac OS does not do this, of course, uh, but it still suffers from the same plague of third-party apps that like to add a whole bunch of clutter. Um, and Bartender, with a bit of an arguably unintuitive design, does solve this problem. Uh, the way that it works is when you open up Bartender, it will allow you to go through every app that you have and hide or show them. But the thing about Bartender is that I don't actually think it's the best tool for this job, and I'm a bit annoyed that like it's always so heavily recommended by everyone. For example, there's another app called Dozer, and this is just one of a few different apps that does the same job about as well for us. Dozer essentially functions very similarly to the way that the built-in Windows taskbar icon management tools do, which is great because these are very simple and straightforward and spectacular. Uh, as soon as you open up Dozer, you get these two little icons on either side of your menu bar icons. These little Dozer dots are how you control the whole app. If you don't know about this, uh, there's a very easy shortcut built into macOS that allows you to rearrange any of the first party Apple icons. You can hold down command and then just drag around or just remove any icons that you don't like. Dozer works exactly the same way. All you need to do is order all of your menu bar icons however you want them to be, probably keeping the ones that you would want to use most often towards the right side of the icon. And then all you do is drag both dots right next to each other, basically as a separator between the icons that you want shown and the icons that you don't. When you click this first dot, 
everything disappears that is on the left side of the dots. Now, if you want to make this setup a little bit simpler, all you have to do is right click on the first dozer dot to get a little preferences menu. You can add a key binding. Uh, my favorite is control space. Uh, you can very quickly and easily check this checkbox right here, hide both dozer icons when the status bar icons are hidden. Uh, and then basically what happens is you're just relying on your keyboard shortcut now to bring up all of your hidden icons. Uh, there's also another cool option you can have that will hide the status bar icons after 10 seconds. So if I were to enable these, after 10 seconds, they'll automatically disappear again. Dozer is an incredibly simple app, and it's also quite a bit cheaper than Bartender at free. This leads pretty nicely into a conversation about the criteria that I use for setting up this list, which I wanted to put at the end of the video so people know, you know, where I'm coming from. The first piece of criteria, of course, is the pricing. Um, you know, Macs aren't cheap. They aren't as expensive as people like to pretend they are, but you do pay an Apple tax. And even if computers are expensive, you know, I've paid as much money for my computers as I have for my car. And I've got to imagine that's like not an unusual statement. It's not crazy to not want to spend unnecessary money on software when you've already spent a pretty good chunk of change on the hardware. Now, I didn't necessarily set out just to find all free apps, but as a pretty lucky coincidence, every app that's on this list, you can download for free right now. Uh, I am going to leave links to donate to all the developers if you're interested and if you end up using any of these apps I would definitely recommend doing that. Uh, another very important piece of criteria is that all of these apps actually add functionality or at the very least like localize functionality to the menu bar to the point that you're able to do something that you weren't really able to do before. Now to give an example of something that was disqualified for this reason uh, we would take a look at something like iStats menu. The thing about this app and I've used it quite a bit off and on for several years is that all it really does is enable CPU RAM and a few other usage graphs at a glance. Just knowing that your CPU is working harder isn't really like all that useful a piece of information. You need to know why that's happening, but that's not really information that iStats will just print out into the menu bar for you. You still need to open up either a sub menu or a different app to figure out what application is causing whatever issue you're having. And as long as that's the case, something like HTOP or even the built-in activity monitor will work just as well, if not way better than what you get with iStats. Uh, another criteria is that all of these apps have pretty easy installation. Uh, this isn't going to be something that everyone cares about, not even close. So if you're just installing apps by following a link, downloading, and then going through like your standard DMG installation process, this won't affect you at all. But if you are a user of Homebrew, you will be happy to know that every single app on this list is available as a task which is great. You can just install an app really, really easily uh, or uninstall an app with one line of code and then just go on about your day. Uh, also, I took into account the development of these apps. Uh, you know, I'm not turning into Richard Stallman or anything, uh, but uh, if the apps are open source, that's a huge plus. Not every app on this list is open source, but a good chunk of them, you can go to the GitHub page and look at every single line of code that we use, use to build them. And that's like very, very nice. You know, keep that in mind. There'll be links below in the description to visit the, um, the repos for a whole bunch of these apps. And finally, I wanted to make sure that all of these apps are still in development. Uh, there are plenty of apps that, you know, do one quick little easy simple thing that get developed and solve a great problem and then are never touched again by the developer. Um, you know, I actually didn't even know that Spectacle, my favorite window manager, had gone out of development until I was doing some research for this video and I was lucky that I was able to find something so similar very quickly and easily. But the thing is with, you know, the update to the Apple file system a few years ago and now Mac OS Catalina no longer longer allowing any 32-bit apps to run, it seems like a good idea to make sure that any app that I'm recommending and probably any app that you're using is at least in development right now and and is planned on being continued to be supported for at least a little while longer. Uh, but that is all for this video. Uh, happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Decade. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.